So, Lisa, did you stick to it? Uh... Welcome to Crocs in the Kitchen. I'm Jessica. And I'm Lisa. Yes, here we are back for another week of, I don't know, we need a title for this. Something, something with Lisa and Jessica, something, something, something. Um, So yes, you guys have been awesome. Thank you for everyone who watched the first episode of my little series that I'm doing with my friend Lisa. You guys seriously gave us some amazing comments and feedback and suggestions and all that. And we really appreciate it. So be sure to keep commenting below and let us know what you want to see from this series. If you have any questions for us, um, if you have any suggestions, all that good stuff keep commenting below and we will keep doing this and hopefully inspiring you guys to get healthy in the new year but lisa how are you doing today hi jessica yeah i'm doing well i've just come back from asda because you know we love shopping for food getting those grocery stores in yeah i went to like three grocery stores yesterday so uh, I actually wanted to, to start out by thanking you, though, for sending me this lovely piece of artwork. <laughs> uh, I was so excited. So Lisa sent this to me, like, what, like, I don't know, a month ago or something. And it finally made its way to St. Louis from the UK. Um, look how talented she is. It's so cute. <laughs> I Pete had a bad Dunham. feeling about it. I didn't trust the post office lady when I gave it to her. She didn't look like she knew what posting to the US meant so well Peef definitely approved it looks like a rag now well you know it got folded a little bit but I'm gonna frame <laughs> it and I'm just so excited um so Lisa how has the last week gone it's been a week since we started this little series so how has the week last week gone for you uh, it's, it's gone well actually to say it's kind of that limbo week between Christmas and New Year where your house is full of rubbish and also with the lockdown, you, we're not allowed to go anywhere unless it's essential travel. So you're kind of in your house, in your pajamas, even more than normal, surrounded by all the uh, Christmas goodies that are left over. So considering all that, I think I've done pretty well. Well, that's good. So what kind, and you know what, I, I commend you for starting this thing with me before the new year. You, you could have said, oh, let's wait and film the first one after January 1st, but we got... We got started before that and that's, you know, props to you. Um, So what are, give us just a rundown of some of the changes that you've made in your diet. You know, obviously if you saw the last episode, you guys know that Lisa kind of, uh, she's been vegan for six to seven years for, for the animals and kind of got herself into a little bit of vegan junk food type things and is trying to switch more to eating whole food plant-based like what Brian and I eat. So I'm kind of um, trying to help her. I don't know. I feel like I'm not qualified, but we'll see. <laughs> oh, I think you are qualified. <laughs> Uh, and you're my friend and you're helping me and helping yes. my friend. So, so this is kind of, kind of cool for me just to, I don't know, it's just a fun thing, but tell us some of the differences between your normal diet and what you've done in the last week, some of the changes that you've made. All right. Well, let me refer to my list. As you know, I can't go anywhere without a list. Um, so even though I was saying that weight wasn't the weight, uh, the weight of me wasn't going to be my main thing. I am down about three pounds, which is great. Um, I haven't stuck, to, it ha- this hasn't been like a cut everything out and just eat vegetables week. If I had, I'd have probably lost about half a stone, but I didn't because I, I, don't, I don't really want to do that. I don't want to do it. But this week I have cut out all the jelly sweets that I've been eating, which was every day, all the mince pies. Um, in fact, I had loads of mince pies left over but I've been putting them in the freezer and actually I've put some chocolate in the freezer as well to stop me from eating it because I didn't want to throw it away. But, you know, if you put it in the freezer, it's hard to eat. You've got to really like want to get them out. Okay. So, so what is a mince pie? Because you were talking about these earlier in the week. And when I think of mince pie, I'm thinking like it's some kind of pie filled with meat, like obviously vegan meat in your case. Um, But what it, it's a sweet. So explain to everybody who's, who's American and clueless. Well, well, I don't understand why you don't know what mince pie is. Mince pies, they're a thing of beauty. They're like delicious buttery pastry, but not dairy butter. 
and they have like a sweet mint in like uh, like you know fr uh, dried fruits kind of thing oh they're just so delicious but they're about this like like a little tiny pie but there can be anything to two three hundred calories and um from they come out in the shops around september time now i really held out and didn't get any till december but then you can buy them in in lidl sell 12 in a pack which are accidentally vegan and as as does own a, a vegan now normally when you put vegan on something it costs four times the price they've just normal cheap prices so i may have gone to asda and bought um six boxes of mince pies lisa six boxes <laughs> maybe it's best if i don't know what mince pies are <laughs> and that was early december <laughs> you told yeah. me that at one point you were eating like three of them a day maybe maybe <laughs> All right, so you've cut out all you've cut out all yeah. the mince pies. Yeah. So the the thing is, like, the amount that I was basically doing a thousand calories a day on mince pies alone, uh, and the high sugar, high high salt, high fat, all the other things that if you like me, you desperately eat. Anyway, so they they're gone. They're okay. In the so what we need is we need Brittany Giroudi to develop a whole food plant based mince pie. Oh my god! Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Like Brittany, please, Brittany. <laughs> you should do Brittany. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, let's move on from the mince pies because I'm starting to think about them too much. Uh, yeah. So also, I cut out all normal bread like bagels, and Mike always has a white sliced crap loaf in as well, which I always eat because he'll have two slices out of it and then just leave it to go moldy. And I think, well, I'll eat that. You know, I don't want to waste food, but it's not good for you. Um, so that all the bread's gone, all the sweets, all the mince pies. Um, or haven't had any packets of crisps or chips, as you call them. Normally, like we buy those variety six packs or whatever, and I might have a couple or more of those a day, particularly at this time of year because I'm in the house a lot as well and I'm bored of eating. Um, what else have I done? I have still had alcohol. There's lots of alcohol in the house and we're at home in my pajamas all day. I've had a few drinks, but not like only like one or two a day. I haven't like been been drinking or anything, but I've been drink grazing, I'd call it. <laughs> See, that's one thing that we're lucky because people ask us all the time, like, oh, how did you give up alcohol or all that? And we're like, well, we actually already never drank to begin with. Like rarely, rarely we will have a drink. Uh, but as you know, cause when we were out, I believe when we were out with you in Leeds, Brian partook in an alcoholic beverage, um, uh, but it's pretty rare. Uh, what about oil? You said you weren't yeah. using any oil, right? No, I haven't, I haven't cooked with any oil. Uh, I've only put, if I needed something to get it started off, put a bit of water in, but to be honest, most things I've got pretty decent frying pan at the moment with the, no scratches on it yet. So that's pretty good for getting things started. Um, so yeah, no, I reckon I've eaten probably about eighty percent less sugar than normal. Uh, easily eighty percent less oil. All right. Overall. What about what about the peanut butter? <laughs> yeah, I would say okay. So we were talking about this, and I asked your advice, and you said cut it out completely. Well, I didn't. Uh, but what I did do was. I really limited myself on that. And because I wasn't eating bread and bagels to slather it all over, um, I did have some on some oat cakes that I made myself. Ooh. Um, I, uh, yeah, I reckon I've had probably 20% of the um, overall amount of peanut butter I would normally have consumed in a week. So there's a jar still like half full downstairs now normally that would have been gone and a new one started by now so I'm well, I would say well that's, that. a, that's a success I would say I think yeah, sometimes also, sometimes when you try to cut things out completely then it just like drives you completely crazy and you keep thinking about it so I think you've done you've done a pretty good compromise there yeah also Sky from uh, YouTube comments on here she messaged me today and she said that the hot whole whole food the health food shop in hebden where we have the cafe she says they have a magical machine that makes put you put peanuts in it and it makes it into peanut butter so i'm gonna go and have a look at that tomorrow 
Hmm, very cool. Very cool. Yeah. Um, so let's see. So you've, you've made a quite, you've made quite a drastic change then with all this. So my question is, um, you're down three pounds, but how are you feeling like physically, mentally, all that kind of stuff? Well, yeah, I feel really good because taking control of a situation always improves you your mood and things that when you feel like you're just eating out of control it's it's a miserable time you know so I feel like I've finally got things on the right track I've been doing a little bit on my exercise bike every morning well I was just doing it whenever actually but somebody in the comments said do it in the morning so I'm trying to do it on the morning um, but I mean if the fancy takes me later on in the day I'll do a bit then the good thing is it's just in the kitchen so you don't need like fancy equipment to get on a bike do you, you just have to get on and do it um, I've been drinking more water because I have had some horrendous headaches every single day. Tuesday it started. I was I was having one of those freak out withdrawal days, you know, when no food is good enough. And I'm looking in cupboards and looking at stuff and it's full of stuff I can't have. And I'm like, Ugh! and my head was just absolutely banging. And I think it's just because of the amount of sugar I just suddenly stopped eating gone from eating packets of sweets and all that stuff and then nothing it really hit me and I've had headaches every day but I think with these things it takes a couple of weeks for your body to get used to the situation and change over so I'm hoping now, they will is that is that something that you've experienced in the past when you've tried to cut out sugar mm -hmm. or have you ever experienced any kind of that kind of headaches before I don't know because I used to be the sort of person who had a lot of headaches anyway so I really wouldn't have been able to distinguish between it but at that freak out day where you know when you just hit a wall of oh why I just want to eat all the things you know I I uh, Ollie has joined us by the way um <laughs> you know I have a uh, I I feel like every time that I've gotten kind of off track and tried to get myself back on track, it's always like the first couple of days, if I can make, I know it's so hard to get through. And I think a lot of people just give up because it's so hard to get through those first couple of days. Cause you want to eat all the things that you've been eating and all that. And so my biggest piece of advice is just once you get a week under your belt, it, it, I tell people, once you get a week under your belt of doing it, like you'll feel, you start to feel mentally just better about it. You'll start to feel like you said more in control and then you, you know, it becomes a little bit easier, but man, getting through those first few days or the first week can be just it. it there's so many times when I've had to I've started doing it and then I've had to restart because I didn't make it through the first few days. So good on you for sticking to it, even with all the headaches. Cause I know that, yeah. you know, definitely. So how do you, when you get the headaches, do you, is there something you take is how do you deal with that? Well, I've tried to leave it and just drink more water, but I was uh, one of my other favorite YouTube um, people that I watched when I first went vegan. I just noticed she had a video saying that if you put, um, ginger powder in water and then just like chug it that's supposed to help so I thought well I'll give that a go I don't know whether it's helped or not but I quite like it actually so I've been drinking it for fun anyway I've been doing it with hot water as well so I don't know but I like it <laughs> um, but one of the days that I, I thought I have to give in and, and had some paracetamol but yeah it was starting to get where you, your eyes feel like they're about to pop out of your head so I had to do something so <laughs> okay so any other like any uh, besides the headaches any other kind of side effects that you've noticed or anything like that um I mean not really side effects just just being glad that I've started but the thing was with this week I'll I'll have to tell you I did have a little cheeky bit of Chinese takeaway on the New Year's Eve Mike got like you know I might as well just admit to it now uh, <laughs> Mike ordered a Chinese and I said I'll have a bit of it. So I had some of his, but I didn't like have my own full Chinese. And then on Friday, this was even weirder. I just couldn't be bothered. I got one of those times. Where I just couldn't be bothered. I put some oven chips in that we had some big ones, like big chunky chips. And um, I started. So when you I say, thought, when you say chips, you mean fries, like potato wedge kind of fries, right? Yeah. But like big cut ones, big ones. And, um, I put they're just oven ones so you're not like adding fat but they are they're obviously got coatings on and stuff I just I thought, 
it was late and I thought I need to have something to eat but I just couldn't be bothered and I kept looking at vegetables and salad and you know when it's just not doing it for you so I had these oven chips and I started eating them I thought I don't even want them so I put them in the kitchen and the dogs had a couple of each later on so you know even though I sort of allowed myself to have something that was a bit rubbish I made that decision that it wasn't worth the calories it wasn't worth it and I think that is a win in its own that it's that learning to control and listen to yourself that if you don't actually want to eat it don't force your body to have it because what's it going to do just you know add another pound on for me is five oven chips that's a pound to me yeah. Uh, yeah, exactly. Um, yeah. So for speaking of New Year's Eve, so Brian and I had our little uh, at home New Year's Eve party, which someone actually asked me, they're like, what do you normally do for New Year's Eve? I was like, exactly what I'm doing now sitting in my yeah. pajamas. Like I don't go out anyway. So yeah, pandemic hasn't really changed that for me. Um, but yeah, so we had our we had vegan pizza, which I sent you from uh, I sent you the video of it bubbling and yeah. Yes, from our vegan deli and butcher here in St. Louis. Uh, th- he also made some vegan chicken nuggets that we had. And then um, we we had some vegan cheese and with some wheat thins, which are my freaking favorite, like accidentally vegan little snack. Ooh, wheat thins. Anyway, <laughs> um, so we ate quite a bit on that day. And um, the next morning I weighed myself and I was up like four pounds from where I had been at my lowest point. I think a lot of it was just the sheer amount of salt that I intook that day. Um, but I am proud to say that here on January, what is it? The fourth, I am currently lower than I was the day before the new year's Eve thing. So I have, I have not only lost my little gain from new year's Eve, but I am down like another pound from there. And the cool thing about that for me is like, you just talked about the control, I have problems as everyone Mm -hmm. on the channel can probably guess going from here's my day of rare and appropriate or whatever, you know, special occasion eating, going off plan and getting myself back because the next day, and let me tell you January 1st. So that was the 31st that we did the, the little off plan stuff on the first, I was the entire day. Cause we still had some stuff left over. There are wheat thins in my cupboard right now. Still, there are, you know, little random things, scraps of things that we didn't finish. Um, we have still two vegan pizzas left. Um, so yeah, yeah. We've got stuff on hand that is from there. Cause we, we always do that where it's like, Oh, we're going to have a day off eating and then we buy like everything. And then we're <laughs> yeah. like, we can't possibly eat all of this in one day. <laughs> Um, so yeah, so January 1st, it was definitely tough on me to have that moment of like, you know what, I could just do one more day. I've already messed up for one day. Let me do another day. And what really kept me going was I, Brian and I had decided weeks ago that we were going to film what we eat in a day, but what we eat in a week from January 1st to the 7th. And I really wanted it to be the first week of 2021. Like that's just what I wanted the video to be. And so I knew that anything that I was going to eat that day, I would have to tell everybody about it because I'm a very (laughs) on, I'm nothing if not a very honest person. And so I was like, so that kept me going. Mm -hmm. And once I got through the first, that first day, it was like, okay, I can do this. Like I've got this. So it was really that moment of realizing like, I can control this. Like, I don't have to let one day get me completely off the rails and mess me up. And that was super important for me. Yeah. Nothing. That's the main thing out of all this, all this adventuring is if you can learn to just be in control and not just let your brain sabotage everything, you know, allow yourself to enjoy the things, but then know that that's not every day and then because when I looked at the stuff as it was on the conveyor belt in the supermarket I thought normally I might have a few bits of fresh vegetables and fruit and then the rest of it would just be like bread and crisps and utter rubbish and so if I can do 80% good stuff and 20% bad stuff instead of 80% bad stuff and 20% good stuff I'm gonna that's all I need to do you know that's all any of us needs to do so it's a control There's nothing better than being at the grocery store and loading up the conveyor belt and then 
looking down at your glorious, like I did that yesterday when I did my shopping haul, when I was at Aldi and then just looking around and comparing it to like what other people are buying. And you just feel like, you're like superior. You're just like, Oh, look at me. And you, you watch the person behind you, like watching you unload it. And they're just like, Oh my, this person is healthy. <laughs> Yeah, just silently sad. judging other people. Yeah. <laughs> like like once in a blue moon, I've got a healthy shop and I'm feeling all superior. Like, yeah. <laughs> Not the one where you bought the 12 boxes of <laughs> was it 12? Was yeah. it six? <laughs> no, but to be honest, I was so excited about getting mince pies. I didn't care what anybody thought. I was practically like jumping on the spot, skipping, like, I got my mince pies, I got my mince pies. Oh, geez. <laughs> okay. So tell me, tell me a little bit, because you've been sending me lovely pictures of what you've been eating. So tell me what some of your favorite things that you've eaten over the last week are so that I can pop up some photos here and show everybody. Well, um, actually, the my favorite thing that I've had. I've just had today um and it was while I was doing my spin bike I was watching um Simnet Nutrition so I like him because he's really enthusiastic and he does like you know your bodybuilding and weight training and I'm sort of interested in the muscle building side of things as well so watching him is very interesting to see and he was doing it they were making like a Christmas charcuterie board like with all little like a snacking table thing just for it was supposed to be for New Year's Eve I think Anyway, they made um, a dill sauce and I thought, ooh, I've got chickpeas. And I, well, I got off the bike mid cycling, put some water on some cashews and then got back on the bike and carried on. But um, then for my dinner, I made a dill, hum a dill hummus. Oh my God, it was amazing. So did you follow his recipe? No, I just sort of took the idea of what he'd made. He'd just done cashews and dill. And I thought, well, I'll, and they'd made a hummus as well, separately. Uh, and I just sort of bodged the two together. Um, and it worked so well. And then I was so happy because yesterday I had uh, made myself a salad and I'd prepped extra. And I thought, I'll eat that for my tea later on, but I, I didn't actually eat it. And then I just found it in the fridge. I was like, wow, it's like I do meal prep now. I'm like, I have a salad already made. This is so exciting. It's like Jessica was, Croc level. <laughs> yeah, that yeah. happened by accident, but it was good. Uh, and so, yeah, I had the hummus on top of my um, salad, but yeah, dill hummus. What a revelation. I'm going to be making that more. I think you need to write up a little recipe that we can share. Yeah, I will do. Lisa yeah. recipe. I feel like you take recipes a lot and then kind of interpret them in your own way. I feel like you're that kind of, you're definitely that kind of cook. Like you're, yeah. you're like, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to take this inspiration, but then I only have these three ingredients in my cupboard. So what else can I add to it? And I think that's great. I think people need to learn to, to, sorry, Ollie has wrapped me around his leash. <laughs> is you doing Ollie? <laughs> um, but I think that's great because I think it's good to have fun in the kitchen and like, you know, be able to improvise and that kind of stuff. I think some people just like get stuck in a recipe. Uh, I, I am terrible for following recipes. I get bored. I'm like, Oh, something it says I need, Oh, well, I'll just chuck this in. It'll be fine. I mean, sometimes it's a disaster and sometimes it's, it's good. So, but today was a win. And I had forgotten that in one of your earlier videos, you had chopped dates up and put them on the salad. And um, I did that. And it was just like with the sweet and the savory. Oh, so good. Oh, Brian made some green beans last night and he put dates in there. Oh. I'm getting him to do this. I'm getting him to do this recipe. It was freaking phenomenal. Like I seriously, I'll put a picture of it now, but you guys will hear more about that on our What We Eat in a Week video. But I was so excited for it. So any other dishes that stood out to you this week? Well, um, cause I asked you specifically about breakfast last week and I have been having porridge and also a lot of people in the comment section had mentioned making porridge and one lady, I'm sorry, I can't remember her name. She was saying about making porridge, like it's almost like a dessert and giving it that kind of level of, you know, effort. And so I was like, right. Okay. And uh, I had, uh, just normal porridge oats as you make it up and then I had chopped banana on top and then I, uh, I put some pecans crushed up on top and some cinnamon on top and then I bought it uh, in Lidl when I went and did a big shop last week they had a carob sweetener which is only about I think it says that you know 
instead of a maple syrup or whatever. Anyway, it was there, so I bought it. And I just thought, if times when I'm desperate, or I just want that little something extra to lift it. So I had a little bit of that on top as well. Oh God, it was so good. But um, yeah, the little, I went little shopping last week and they had tons of stuff and I bought loads of tofu and. Oh, speaking of tofu, you made some tofu yesterday that you sent us a little preview video and stuff of, and Brian is like obsessed with it. So guys look for a new recipe coming for Crocs in the kitchen. That's inspired by Lisa's tofu. Uh, Cause he, when I asked him, I was like, Oh, we can talk about it on the video. He's like, no, don't give out the secrets. I want to do a recipe. I'm like, <laughs> Lisa's secrets. Uh, yeah. And it's cool. I think because you've been cooking this way for so long that like you have learned things that we wouldn't even have thought of doing. And so that's, I think that'll be cool for future. We can do some like collaboration recipes and that kind of stuff maybe in the future. Um, but you've also been using a little planning sheet to kind of not to plan your meals, but to track what you've been eating to keep kind of like uh and so you got this download from the Gerudi family correct yeah uh, i saw that Brittany had put these weekly meal planners on and um it's you you can just download it straight and print it and it's from it's her um it's from her facebook group yeah. so i will link in the i'll link in the blog post to her facebook group if you join it you can get this and some other resources from her yeah, she's, she's got this week, weekly meal planner and then you put your week and then you can plan all your meals and then there's a little space for a shopping list. However, I thought, ooh, I am going to write down all the foods as I eat because I'm not very good at planning in that far in advance, but I thought it was a good way to record the food that I actually ate. So um, I filled it in and uh, Slimming World people will know this is kind of what you do with them if you want to keep track of your food. If you write down your food every day as you're eating it, it just keeps you, you know, more uh, aware of exactly what you're eating so you don't forget things. Like even the bad stuff I've, I've tried to write down. Well, I did them first in my big diary, but I have filled it in. And instead of a shopping list, this is like things that I tried to do and I've so I've written reduced sugar and oil and salt more exercise didn't have any pin spice or crisps uh vastly less alcohol so even though i did a bit of alcohol grazing it was still a lot less than i could have done had i not made that decision that i was going to change things around so yeah it's very a, cool. it's a good little thing it's very useful so thank you Brittany. that's really useful all righty. Well, that's very cool. And I feel like uh, we've gone on long enough for this episode, but I have so many things that I want to, I like, I keep texting you like, I'm like, oh my gosh, we should do this. We should do this. We should do that. Like I have so many ideas of things that we should do in this little series, but I have to remember that we don't have to do it all today. We have plenty of time in the future. There's so many things exciting things so um thank you very much for joining and i feel like you've done a really good job this first week so um congrats to you uh, for making it through the first week and uh yeah <laughs> she's doing like <laughs> uh but yeah anything else to add for this week lisa that's all i got <laughs> <laughs> all right well on that note if you like this video please give it a thumbs up or you can give it a thumbs down if you hate us um <laughs> you can also subscribe to the channel uh so you can get uh if you click the little bell notification you'll get updates when we post new videos just like this one i feel like i'm just stealing brian's lines and it's i have it like burned in my head what he says but um we are also on social media i love using instagram and brian always monitors the facebook messages if you want to reach out to brian um let's see what else uh i think that's all i got uh we'll see you next time on crocs in the kitchen mm -hmm. bye see ya